Okay, this is going to be my very first C++ Unreal Engine tutorial, and in this one specifically, we're going to be starting out with the most easy thing I can think of to do, and that's just allow your third-person character to have a transition. So instead of being just idle and straight to running, kind of have like an inner minute. So if you're at idle, you go to walking speed, then when you press shift, you go to sprint. This is incredibly easy to do, thanks to the way Unreal Engine has abstracted pretty much our character movement for us. So, let's go ahead and dive on in. Now, I'm not going to go into much, but to make a project, just go ahead and launch whichever engine version you want to use. I'm using 421.2. Then go to the new project, E++ tab, third person, and give it a name. The name I'm using for this one is YT Tutorial TP for third person. Then you'll be met with this screen here, and Unre I mean, uh, Visual Studio should open up for you, but if it doesn't, just go to File and open Visual Studio. Once Visual Studio is open, down here you will see just a continuation of just it's pretty much setting itself up, like X out of X completed, whatever. So once Visual Studio is open, good to go. When Real Engine's open, good to go. Go ahead and get started. So the very first thing, I just want to go ahead and actually disable a few plugins, uh, anything VR related, because otherwise it's going to keep popping up for me. And we'll just do that later. We want to look at our character here. So to find him, go ahead and go to Source in Visual Studio, your project name. Then you'll see project name, character CPP, and .h. Go and open both of those. And we're going to come down here, as you can see, our movement. So when the user runs our jump action, which spacebar, it'll call the function jump. That is. Well, here. So, but you see here, move forward. Same thing with move right. It's just one initial value, which one for moving forward, negative one, for instance, if backwards. So S, for example. But that's only if you lock the camera in place from rotation. I'll just, that'll be in later on. But here's where pretty much the logic behind it is. We want to have our bind action, such as jump here. So this is bind action is for a key press. So if we wanted to have it when we press shift, we would use bind action, not bind axis. That's for things such as your mouse to turn around and all that kind of stuff. Or control a joystick for example. So we would have one of these for pressed and one of these for released. And we would have that toggle boolean that we would put in our header. And that boolean would be uh, just is sprinting. So in our move forward function, same thing with move right. If is sprinting, so we are in fact sprinting, we want to take this value and we'll either just divide it, cut it in half, or make it a little bit less than that, depending on what we see fit. So uh, we want to change one thing first, because as you will see in your content browser, go to Anakin. Third person CPP, blueprints, and open up your character. What's it called? Here, you see our max walk speed? Well, currently it's set to 600. So the way we go, pretty much we're going from zero straight to 600 once we start moving around, such as when you press W. That's fine, but. If you look at our animation for it, go to Mannequin, Animations, and then our Idle to Run animation, it's going to 375. So you can see here which is our animation state. We're at Idle. Here's where we would be walking, which would be at well, our value of 93, and then our Sprinting, which is at a value of 375. Problem being with this is 
if our max walk speed is 600, so when we start walking, it immediately goes to 600, this doesn't cover that range. So if we were to half it, we would be going at well, roughly 180 or so, 87, which would be incredibly slow. So instead, we want that to be about, well, just, well if we half it, it would put us around 300, which would give us this. And we don't really want that for our walking, because we go from walking, which is this, to sprinting. And it's not really quite right. <laughs> so one way we can go about doing that is look up here on our axis settings. Make sure you have this. Uh, it's not an animation sequence. I can't remember what it's called. Something I'll check here in a second. Click the drop down for horizontal axis. Maximum axis value. 600. So now, if we go to 300, our walking, as you can see, it looks about right. This would be, actually that looks a little bit better, so we might go a little less than half. Depending on how fast we'll be moving. Then we go to running once we hit our max speed, which is 600. So, once you have our max set to 600, go ahead and save it. This is called Ah, it's a blend space. Alrighty, so yeah, let's set up. We want to go ahead and make a little input for it so we can detect when our key is pressed. So you can do that by going settings, project settings, down here to input, and axis mappings. I mean action mappings. So this will be where we have our key presses, such as your keyboard. So click the plus arrow to make a new one. I'm just going to call mine Sprint and assign it to Left Shift. Now when we press Left Shift, well, we have it set up to do that, but nothing's going to happen because we have to set it up in our input component here, just like our jump. Now, since we are going to be doing literally the exact same thing here as jumping, just calling a function when we press it, calling another function when we release it, we can go ahead and copy this. For name jump to sprint. Now, just to show you what I mean, if we build it, now when I press shift, he should jump along with if you press space. So shift, jump, space, jump. So what we need to do is make our functions. So let's go ahead and go to our header. See, here's our move forward right I want to put it just below that void sprint start and void sprint stop and our boolean value so bool b is sprinting it didn't really matter well yeah go ahead and just set that to false go ahead and build it because it's going to take a little bit longer than normal due to the header tool now we can go ahead and make these functions. So, scroll down here to the bottom, where we have some space, void, our project name. Now, in sprint start, what we want is to set it to that boolean value we just made to true. So B is sprinting equals true and on our stop b is sprinting equals false so now we can detect if we are sprinting or not now we need to set that up in the put so instead of jump sprint i call it no up the class out. Sprint start and sprint stop. Just like so. So now it'll run those. So now when we press shift, it'll run our sprint start function. And when we release it, it'll run our sprint stop. So now we can do our check. So if B is sprinting, 
what we can do is take value. I'm just gonna times equal by zero point. Yeah, we'll do zero point three. That'll be a a little less than half, but not a whole lot less. So if we go into game now and we start moving around, we should find ourselves. And I completely got this backwards. I'm sorry. If we are not sprinting. Set lower the value. So we walk. As you can see, it's nice and slow. We sprint. It goes up to sprinting, just like so. Walk, sprint. But the problem being, let's say we go left. We sprinting, right. We sprinting, and I am not pressing space at all. I mean, a uh, shift at all. So when we move left or right, it's still going to be sprinting. We can do the exact same thing in our move right function. And control shift B to build. And when we move, walking, sprinting, walking, sprinting, walking, sprinting. You can see it's gone just like, well, how it should. Just a little more natural and control over the movement. So that's all you need to know how to make your setup while your guy sprint. Go ahead and file and save all because I'm going to be continually kind of just building onto this project for the tutorials. So what this tutorial series, well the beginner portion should entail. I am currently learning. I'm only a month or so in, just kind of on my free time. As I learn, I will continue to post videos. So I've already got a moderate amount under my belt at the moment. So I'm thinking probably part two, we will go into making, well we can make something simple like a, a little room that we can make a light switch out of. And then we can take that, just normal basic light switch, and make that so it works in multiplayer. So let's say you have two, well, two instances of the game, one client, one server. If the server turns the light on, the client will see the light turn on as well. If the server turns it off, the client will see the light turn off. If the client turns the light on, the server will see the light turn on as well. If the client turns the light off, the well, server will see the light turn off as well. That will go for all the other clients in the game. So something simple like that. Then we'll move on to, I guess, a door. So I'll just see. This is just a kind of just a starter video to get myself up and going and actually making this. So hopefully you learned something.